Now that we've looked how to add simple content types like text and images and video and tables, we wanted to look a bit at how you can add some interactive e-learning modules without having to resort to an external authoring tool. So we did include something simple on the site called H5P. That's an open standard and there are a number of modules that you can use and easily incorporate into your LearnDash courses that will help to promote engagement and reflection and, and just enjoyment of the, the course. So what I want to do is, again, I'm going to go into the um, sample course that's been set up because we have a number of examples available. So there are a couple of different element types for H5P in here. There's a sample course presentation, which if I go into it and it loads up down here, then you can see this is how this works. There are interactive elements here. Um, you can put things in here. Obviously that's going to be wrong, um, but uh, there we go, Arctic and Averin. So you can do things like this. You can even embed videos in them, something like that. It's, it's kind of a simpler but less flexible alternative to software like Captivate or Storyline or Rise or Lectora or iSpring or any of those other types of e-learning authoring tools that can also be used. Um, but they do have a very high learning curve and uh, are quite expensive. So we use H5P on the site because it's free, it's relatively simple, uh, it's it's really easy to, to start using it. It's just again that there are not a lot of customization options. So if you look at something like uh, the quiz, like when you're going through these things too, the controls that you see, so things like that, you can't control what it looks like. You can't modify behaviors, you can't have branching, um, so a lot of things that more interactive tools would allow you to do, like I'm going to get these wrong, um, you can't do with uh, with H5P. But in terms of a, a simple intervention, an easy way to add some interactivity to your to your e-learning content, it's still a great thing to include and something we try to use on on most of our sites if there's an opportunity. So again, like changing these these icons, these buttons, customization is very limited. But you know, on the, on the benefit side, that means it's really easy to get started and you don't have to worry about the complexity. So let's take a look at this lesson in particular and how we set this up. So I'm just going to edit that again. And if I go in here, you can see it's just another instance where we have a short code and an ID there. So there's also a button for this one. So for anything you have created, it would show up here. You can click insert. It's going to put it in there. Otherwise, just kind of similar to the tables that we showed in the last video, you'd be able to set it up first and get a short code uh, as you're authoring it that you can embed on a page. So this particular one is ID5. So I'm going to start off by looking at how this was set up. So this is the existing one. I'm going to go into H5P content and let's take a look at H5P. And in here you can see it's got eight sample H5P modules set up. You can see it's got the content type here. So there are two course presentations and interactive video. Of course, you need to know what these module types are. So what we suggest for that is that you, and there'll be a link in the, uh, the lesson itself, take a look at the H5P site. So on the H5P site, they've got a listing of the different content types that are available. One important note, though, there, for any new ones, it is possible that they would show up on this page before they show up in LP. So there could be a slight lag here. Um, there wouldn't be many, and it's going to be unusual when that's the case, but it is possible that it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one match for the content types. So for any of these things, like the one we were looking at was, uh, so number five was a question set. So if I take a look at this question set, then I can see an example on this site. So it's it's the example I was already using. Um, and then here, it's just helpful for anywhere we don't have samples, like uh, what do we not have a sample of? I don't think we have the memory game. So you can try this out, see how it works. And there we go, we got a match. I'm not paying attention at all, unfortunately. Um, anyway, you can you can match these things up and um, you can see exactly how this works. There we go, we got the match. 
All right, and then obviously I've got too many card turns. Anyway, this is a good way of getting an idea of how things work before you actually use them on your site. And for some of them, there will be some documentation. This one does not have anything. Let's go to interactive video because that one's a bit more complex. There are some instructions then here, but it's very limited. Uh, and comments down there. So anyway, in some cases there are, is documentation. It's unfortunately inconsistent just because it's an open standard. People are contributing these these content types. So there is some variation in how they're used. Anyway, so we've got this one that we created. This is number five. We can go ahead and edit that just so you can see how it's been set up. And you can see there's not much we can do with it if I scroll down the page. So there are not a lot of options. What we would do here is we can control, you know, what the, the score is for passing if we want to have a pass threshold. Um, in this case, you can see we've, we've got question ordering, so, you know, we can move things around if we need to. Um, this is a multiple choice question. Here are the different question types that we can include in this simple quiz. So this multiple choice one, here is the question here. You can just click on it to edit it. Um, down here, you've got your correct answer and your distractors. Yes, distractors down here. All right. Um, so in, in most cases, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you would just go through and populate these things. You can see there are a limited number of um, settings you can define for the content types, but it is pretty limited. So this is a relatively simple one. Some of them do get more complex. So if I if I go into uh, the interactive video, as that one is a little more difficult to work with. Let's take a look at that one. So in that case, then um, I'm just going to close that. So we have a video here. We can add interactions to it. So this is how we do that. Um, you can see there are a lot of controls here. This one does get a little more complex. So there are some instructions as you go through it, how to work with different things. Um, and there are a lot of things that you can test here. So if you wanted a question here, you know, I could put something in there and I could say, you know, have a question there. Um, uh, let me go ahead and remove that. There is a bit of trial and error. Um, we're not covering the details of all of these in the documentation or in the screencast, the best thing you can do again is to check out the H5P site and get a better feel for exactly how things work. So let's let's just suppose that I am setting up a um, a new H5P content type. I'm just going to set up a simple quiz, and I'm just going to use uh, what did I want here? The question set. So the one that we looked at briefly before, this is fine. I'm going to add a single multiple choice question. And I'm going to say correct. And choose that as correct. And I'm going to say this one is incorrect. And that's all I needed, just the two of them. That looks fine. I'm not going to change anything else. And I'm going to now publish that and that's going to create it and when I create it it's going to let me test it here if I want to and then this gives me the short code of course um, as we saw when we were editing the other one though there is the um, the option there's the button here to to add the h5p content so let me just say this is a sample quiz for screencast and use that Actually, yeah, that's fine. It's unique enough. So I could drop the shortcode in here. I could also choose it from here. It's this one. I know that it's modified a minute ago. And you can see it just does exactly the same thing. So now we would have two on the page. And if I publish that and take a look at it again in the front end, let's wait for that to load, go into the front end. And now we have what I set up here. So let's do that, check it. It's correct. We're going to go ahead and finish it. And I got one out of one. So I passed that. Um, and that's really all that we're going to cover in the H5P section. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, the best thing you can do is check out some examples, look for documentation, and just try it out on your site. 
Um, so when you get into LP, try creating a new H5P module and then just test it in the front end. Now hopefully all of this is helpful and does give, give you a bit of insight in terms of the types of media and interactive content types you can have on your LP site. In the next section we're going to be looking more at forms.